Attention Institute personnel. Recently, the Templin Institute celebrated another exciting milestone. We've reached over 250,000 subscribers here on YouTube. While this in itself is worthy of acknowledgement, given 2019 is half over, why not also use it as an excuse to update everyone on what's going on and what we have planned for the future? Earlier this year, we took a bit of a break, and since then, we've reduced the number of episodes released each month. We've said a few times that we never expected the channel to grow this quickly, and while it's been a lot of fun hitting milestone after milestone, the downside to this momentum is that we've realized we need to make our production cycle more efficient, so we don't literally catch fire and explode while trying to keep pace. This is something we've been aware of for a while, and for the past year or so, we've been working on a project we're calling Templin 2.0, mostly because it never occurred to us to give it a sweet name, like Operation Thundershark. In addition to making things easier on us behind the scenes, Thundershark, I mean Templin 2.0, is a complete overhaul of the Templin Institute as a whole. We'll be rolling out a brand new look for our YouTube videos, Twitch streams, and basically everything else. We'll also be using it as an excuse to get going on some new ideas, follow through on old ideas we've promised, and even revamp our Patreon page based on your feedback. In short, Templin 2.0 is the next big step for the Templin Institute, and one we're really excited about. So when can you expect Templin 2.0 to roll out? If you've watched our XCOM streams, you'll know there's a propensity for our plans to… collapse. So it's probably best if we wait until 2.0 is ready to go before we announce anything solid. Keep your eyes on our social media channels, though. Maybe we'll throw up a few teasers. The most important aspect of Templin 2.0, however, is that we can put an end to the subversive element that has repeatedly attempted to manipulate our audience into believing there is some great secret behind the Templin Institute. I must reiterate once again that the glitches in our software are just that, glitches, and any type of pattern or messages derived from these errors are just coincidences or fragmented nonsense. I am pleased to report that we have already patched many of the vulnerabilities in our security, and I can say with complete confidence that such interruptions will never occur again. See? So, moving on to more exciting news. The Templin Institute will once again be in Atlanta for DragonCon this year. If you'd like to meet Mark and myself, <laughs> How many of them have you heard? The interviews are those private journal entries of hers. I listened to all the ones you gave me. And what's your assessment? Well, it's difficult to judge. It sounds like whatever happened in 4081 really did a number on her. We figured that much out ourselves. Well then, maybe you should be more specific. You and Samantha were part of a field mission last year through 4076? That's right. She mentions it in one of her entries. Personal Journal Sightings, Entry 1. Yeah, I listened to it. Well, can you elaborate at all on what she described? Not really. I was doing perimeter work most of that week. Barely saw any of the people working on the ridge. Do you think what they pulled up from there is related to all this? Samantha took you into the wetlands surrounding the dig site? <sighs> yeah. She said she dropped a roll of film or something. Asked me if I'd help her look for it. Did this strike you as unusual? Not really. She was still kind of new then. The rookies were always dropping shit and freaking out over it. The area she took you to, did you notice anything out of place? Like those people she talked about? Anything that didn't seem to belong. How should I know? It was an interdimensional alien swamp. There was a creepy bird-looking thing. I saw a tree that kind of looked like it had a mouth. I'm confused. I've already spoken with a bunch of other departments about this. I know Scott and the rest of the guys have too. So what are you hoping I'll tell you? Okay. I'll be perfectly clear. You didn't see anything resembling those figures Samantha mentioned in her log entry. No. What exactly is the major point of concern here? Spotting weird-looking shit in a gate? It's not exactly a unique occurrence anymore. I mean, 
$40.99 alone. Are you aware she officially reported similar sightings in three other gates? She stopped after she was suspended, but according to her journals, she saw the same things in at least nine other instances that she didn't report. All in different gates, across multiple investigations. And what? You don't believe her? What she's describing is a group of individuals capable of using the gates like we do. Not only that, but they're able to be in a gate at the same time as us. Twin incursions. Doesn't that bother you? Should it? It's not something I've spent a lot of time thinking about. Well, we have. And people are getting very nervous. Jordan. I'm going to tell you something you probably figured out already. We are dealing with the most powerful and dangerous opportunity in perhaps all reality, and nobody in this organization has any clue what to do about it. We send people out there with a rifle and a surplus Czechoslovakian gas mask, and expect they'll be able to handle every manner of phenomena. You're talking like I'm not one of those poor idiots. The only reason any of this flies is because we've spent the last convincing the people in charge that we understand how the fundamentals of this all works. We know the rules. The instant that changes, we go from being in total control to fumbling around with something we are completely unprepared to understand, let alone start messing with. Every operating procedure, every safety measure, everything we know about the gates could be entirely incorrect. Up until last year, Everyone knew that nobody got out of 4081 alive. We didn't need to understand why, just that that's the rule. Then Samantha not only somehow gets in, but just walks on out. That was an anomaly, but one we could explain away. But what's described in her logs is not. Twin incursions into the same gate violates the fundamental nature of the system. It's supposed to be impossible. If Samantha is telling the truth, then it would seem to indicate another group is not only capable of using the gates concurrently with us, but is somehow able to know when and where our people, or at least Samantha, are going to be operating across multiple deployments. In a few days, the director is going to announce a temporary freeze on all gate activity. Maybe that's a good idea. Your name is on an interview list. The director is going to be talking to you personally and soon. Potentially even today. Uh, the director... Um, <clears throat> uh, what, do I, what do I tell him? Just what you told me. You didn't see anything. You have no reason to believe that there is any truth to what Samantha had reported. Okay. Uh, I can do that. Perfect. I told you what I did because I'm going to have need of you in the future. And it is essential you understand the stakes we are working under. I'll be in touch. But we're done for now. If you're able, get some sleep. Uh, wait. Hold on. Yes? I have to ask. What did you find? I don't understand what you're asking. Well, I mean, it's like I said. We deal in freaky shit. That's just like a Tuesday here. I've talked to the guys downstairs in D49. The things in this building that can shape the flow of reality and upend every natural law. Compared to that... Even if she wasn't lying or delusional, what Samantha said she saw seems harmless by comparison. Most cases like this are the result of nerves, mistaken identity, or a hundred other things. Right. M my point is, even 4081 wasn't enough to suspend the program. So what's changed? I just don't think you'd go through all this effort unless you maybe had some evidence backing up Sam. Something that says maybe she's telling the truth. Is that something you'd really want to know? Posting all our DragonCon plans, as well as any future conventions we'll be attending, to our social media pages, so be sure to check them out if you haven't already. Until next time, thank you so much for your continued support, and if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see in Templin 2.0, let us know in the comments. We hope you'll continue to join us as we investigate alternate worlds. The Templin Institute investigates alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to directly support us, vote in polls to determine future topics, and receive some cool rewards, please consider pledging to our Patreon page.